I've been asked to make a little film on my bevel gauge, which you call bevel gauge. It's a good idea because it's a little trickier for knives than it is with chisels. Chisels are straightforward. So the thing we're interested in, the thing and what the, the bevel gauge shows us, is the inclu included angle. The included angle. That's what we're interested in in the gauge. That's what we're interested in finding out from the blade. And also what matters and is important is the centre line. So that when you put or present the knife to the gauge, it actually is lying correctly, balanced along the imaginary centre line of the aperture. If that's happening and you've, ga you've made correct contact with the horned edge, then bingo, you found the horned angle. So the thing you want to find out first of all is pick up against a good light or a piece of paper like this, pick up what you think is the horned edge. There it is, there it is. And if this, the blade is lying equally along the imaginary centre line, then we're pretty close to getting the horned angle, assuming that when you did horn it, you horned it equally on both sides. We'll have to assume that. Obviously you can investigate that later on if you've got some sort of coordination problem. So anyway, we're along the centre line, we're picking up, obviously, got to get at right angles, sorry, got to get perpendicular, perpendicular to the blade, that's it, at right angles, not like that, not like that, get at right angles to the blade, we'll pick up on that horned edge, there we go, and check that it's consistent on both sides, that the blade lies along the centre line, and bingo, you've got your included angle. And obviously, the angle you horn at is half of the included angle. Chisels are dead easy, obviously with a chisel, or we've already got a, an, a, let me see, a face, a flat, even though it's curved as a gouge, it's still just flat in that direction. Rest on the flat face, here we go, it needs to be a little bit more obtuse, a little blunter, there we go, oh sorry, more acute, just because I don't know what I'm talking about there. <laughs> it's interesting actually, you can see the amount of radius that's on there. Because as well, I think, I'm not sure, this is only something I'm not an expert at, but if we take a cross section of a knife, and there's the extreme point, it's quite interesting as to what degree that cutting edge is radius. So if we magnify that, there we go, there's the extreme cutting point. It's quite surprising how radius that can be. Obviously the angles are exaggerated, just to give a better impression. So just to recap, the way we work it is pick up just roughly where you think it lies, somewhere along the different included angle apertures. Pick up where you think it is, where you think it lies. Obviously keep it at right angles to the blade. Look for light through there, see its rounded nature. See where you think it lies. Rock it on the beveled edge, obviously. Don't handle these things if you don't know what you're doing because you don't want to cut yourself. And when the blade lies equally disposed between the two angled faces, you can read from the gauge and it'll tell you your included angle. Included angle being the angle of the two bevels combined. So I think that's about it. Chisels are easy. Here's a, here's a rare beast. That's a Henry Russell. There's very few of those knocking around. Nicely, nice, nicely balanced tool as well. It's got a thrust washer in because that's dead easy. And using the bevel gauge, it's interesting to find out how how obtuse I've been grinding the angles. Sorry, honing. Grinding is the preparatory rough process. Honing is our little finishing process. So again, right angles to the thing, perpendicular. Achieve our datum and then push it up against the angled face. So what you're doing, actually, I shouldn't, I didn't explain that enough. What you're doing is moving it from one to the other, one to the other, checking for light until you think it is appropriate. It's never jammed down the aperture. That proves nothing. The little circular cutout is only for me, the toolmaker. Um, it seemed the appropriate design, and it also allows me to build a, a stronger press tool punch. Because if we had a, a magnifying glass or a microscope. It would be utterly impossible to make to a feather edge. We've always got to have some sort of cutout at the end. That is an impossibly thin punch to, to infinity. 
or high magnification that's impossible so we have a, a circular cut out at the end of it that's the way to do it so that's about it explained you're looking at included angle and what you're doing with your knife blade is gauging is looking for it equally disposed in the included angle and again moving it from one to the other checking that the light is correct this thing is equally disposed yes uh, presto we've got your honing angle it also quite I think importantly allows you to communicate with other people as to what are your horn at and um, unless you put a, a gauge onto it you can often be guessing too much it's handy to apply the gauge so when you communicate with others we're on the same wavelength hope that helps hope it explains thanks anyway bye bye